about runway incursion avoidance. So in order to understand runway incursion avoidance, we need to understand what the definition of a runway incursion is. And in the PHAC, which is the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, it's defined as any occurrence in the airport runway environment involving an aircraft, vehicle, person, or object on the ground that creates a collision hazard or results in a loss of required separation with an aircraft taking off, intending to take off, landing, or intending to land. So in layman's terms, this could mean that it's something that causes the flow of the airport environment to be disrupted, uh, is the way that I was learned how to remember what runway incursion meant. Um, an example of runway incursions could be crossing a runway uh, hold short marking uh, without an ATC clearance, taking off without a clearance, or landing without being cleared to land. And then causes of runway incursions are going to be just failure to comply with ATC instructions. Maybe you don't know uh, much about that airport. It's a new, new environment. You haven't flown there before. That could be a, a cause that would lead to a runway incursion. So just ensure that you have a current airport diagram and remain heads up and uh, keep your eyes outside when you're taxiing around and when you're in the uh, airport environment. It's critical to be paying attention to what's around you and just maintain that situational awareness. Now causes of runway confusion, which would lead to a runway incursion, could be the airport is extremely complex. So maybe you decided to uh, fly to DFW and now you've got a, an extremely complex uh, airport environment that you're not used to. That's going to cause some confusion, which could lead to that incursion. Being in close proximity to a runway threshold is another one, and then using runways as taxiways, which that happens a lot of times when uh, there's multiple runways. You'll be asked to use the runway to taxi to the runway that you're supposed to take off from. So it's really important to make sure that you, uh, if you're cleared for runway 17, for example, make sure you put it in your heading bug, 170 for your heading. That way you would understand if you're lined up on runway 17 to take off by referencing your uh, compass. So hold short instructions. These, if you think of a hold short line, think of a stop sign. So it's a marking on the ground that's going to be before that you get into a uh, runway for, to take off. And there are two stripes on the side that you have to stop in front of, and then there's two dash lines on the side that you would be able to go through. So you could think of that as a passing line on a highway or a do not pass lane. So when you get that hold short clearance, you need to taxi up to the hold short line, just like the stop sign analogy I was using, and stay there. And then you're going to let ATC know I'm holding short at this runway at this sign. And just make sure that you're reading back the entire clearance when you do get a hold short clearance. So for example, you could be told cross runway X, hold short runway Y. And then you would need to repeat that back to ATC along with your call sign. And when you are at a runway um, about to come on, you're waiting at the hold short line, make sure that you're scanning the entire length of the runway and then also look at the approach end to make sure nobody's coming in to land because you want to uh, not just rely on ATC, you want to be vigilant as well and be looking out and making sure that there's no dangers for you to get onto the runway. Lineup and wait instructions, these are going to be used if you need to get on the runway and maybe there's somebody that's going to come and land, but they want you on the runway ready to take off and they don't want that gap of you having a taxi out there and get ready. So that's a time that that would be used, and it's only a clearance to enter the runway. It's not a clearance to take off. So make sure you're really paying attention if you get a lineup and wait instruction from ATC. And if you do get a lineup and wait, and you're out there waiting to take off or waiting for more instructions, you need to wait about 90 seconds. And then if you haven't heard anything, go ahead and contact ATC, find out what's going on. With your pilot responsibilities, just some general tips. 
Um, give your undivided attention to taxiing and being in a movement area, just like you would if you are in any phase of flight, which taxiing is a critical phase of flight, even though you are on the ground. The, uh, the biggest fatality in um, aviation has actually come from a runway incursion when two 747s collided. So it's clearly uh, something to be very cognizant about. And just be familiar with your airport before you go somewhere. If you're going to go to a new one, go ahead and print out that current taxi diagram and have that on hand, kind of be looking through it and understand what you're going to get in, get yourself into. With workloads, uh, the lower the workload, the better. So when you are going to be in a more complex environment, just really try to narrow down your workload. And this could mean just using a sterile cockpit all the time. Don't use checklists ever when you're moving. Make sure that your airplane is stopped if you're going to be using a checklist. And um, also just set your frequencies and any kind of navigation uh, frequencies that you would need into your GPS or into your comms for your uh, frequencies before you're moving. And that's going to help you out a lot because you're not having to switch around and also be looking outside while controlling the aircraft. So, With taxi instructions, you need to write down your taxi instructions regardless of how many times you've heard the same ones over and over because just, just because you've had these instructions a lot of times doesn't mean that they won't change today. And it's just good practice for when you go to a different airport, for example. And then you're going to read back those taxi instructions exactly as you were told them. And uh, then ATC would correct you if you didn't read it back correctly. So it's just a good way to check yourself. An example of that would be, uh, let's say I am in a Skyhawk and I'm 974 Sierra Papa. So I would say if we're at TSTC in Waco, I would say TSTC ground, Skyhawk 974 Sierra Papa is on the ramp with Echo, ready to taxi for a southeast departure. And then ATC might come back and say, Skyhawk 974 Sierra Papa, Taxi 17 right via hotel. Then I would repeat back 17 right via hotel, Skyhawk 974 Sierra Papa. And that's how that exchange would happen. As far as situational awareness goes, just maintain situational awareness at all time. Complacency is the biggest killer. And use all the resources that you have available. Maybe you have four flight, or if you have a G1000, you've got a moving map. Use these things to your advantage. They're there for you to use. Look outside. Remain vigilant of all the other aircraft that are in the area, in the runway environment, or in the airport environment, excuse me. And then with landing, make sure that when you're doing your descent checklist, you're briefing the taxiway that you're going to exit the runway on. That's really important to make sure you're not having to think of what you're going to do after you've already landed. Because at that point, you are in the airport environment, and that's high probability of having a runway incursion. And when you do land, uh, once you taxi past the whole short line, make sure that you stop and do your after landing uh, checklist. This is going to make your DPE when you're taking a check ride very happy and it's also just the right thing to do. When you're operating at a towered airport, you kind of have somebody looking out for you that has your, that has your back. ATC is going to be looking for you as well as just you looking for yourself and communicating with ATC is required when you're in any sort of movement area so make sure you stay on their frequency at all times that way they can give you any kind of instructions that might pop up um, I just gave you an example of how the exchange would work so you would say you know TSTC ground Scott 974 Sierra Papa I'm on the ramp, I've got Echo, ready to taxi for this departure. Then they'd read that back to you, and then you would follow the instructions that they give you following that on. Now, when you're at a non-towered airport, you need to remain vigilant because uh, you're the master of your own fate at this point. There's nobody looking out for you. You are expected to give your intentions on the radio periodically. So, let's say you just started up your airplane, you're about to go fly. You're going to go taxi to this runway. Um, you would just get on the CTAF frequency, which is your common traffic 
an advisory frequency. And you'd say, you know, Skyhawk 974 Sierra Papa is going to taxi to 17 right via hotel. And you would expect for other people who would be using the airport at that time to be doing the same thing. And usually that is the case, but it's not required. So that's why you need to stay extra vigilant in a non-towered airport environment and maintain that situational awareness because you don't have ATC up in the tower looking out for you at this point. And just expect the worst, you know, expect aircraft to be used in different runways. Maybe, maybe someone's not paying attention and just don't rely on anyone but yourself in this situation. Now, when you're operating at night or in low visibility, um, increased awareness is required. So this is going to be more challenging. It's, uh, it's good to know how the lighting works on the runway. So later on, we'll talk about how, um, runway markings on identification, stuff like that. But for now, it's just good to know that when you see blue lights, these blue lights are gonna be on the taxiway edge. And then you're going to have a white light on the runway center line if that's equipped. They don't always have it. But um, if they do have it, it's gonna be white and it's gonna be on the center line. So that's, that's what you can use at night. And then when you're looking at a taxiway, the taxiway center line is going to be green. Um, if you're not comfortable when you're taxiing at night, just go ahead and ask for a progressive taxi. And what a progressive taxi is, is when they're going to tell you, turn left here, turn right here, stop now, go now. They're just kind of holding your hand throughout the whole taxi process. And finally, let's talk about how you use your exterior lights. So as soon as you turn your engine on, you always want to have the rotating beacon on. Now, if you're uh, taxiing, you want to have all of your lights on except for your landing light. And that's going to be your rotating beacon, your nav lights, your strobes, and your taxi light. Now, if you're crossing a runway, you need everything on. So all of the lights that I just mentioned plus your landing light. And then when you're entering the departure runway or if you're going to line up and wait, you can uh, keep everything on but turn off your landing light. And then for takeoff, just turn everything back on. And then once you get to uh, the appropriate place or the appropriate altitude, then you can shut off your landing and taxi lights so that you're not going to blind other people who are flying. And this concludes my lesson on runway incursion avoidance.